Okay, welcome to the electronics class for October the 15th. The plan for today is we are going to uh, go over briefly the last night's homework, but I am not going to confirm whether or not your answers to problem number six were right. It's gonna be your job to confirm whether or not they're right. And the way that I'm gonna have you do that is I'm gonna have you build a circuit and measure the current and see if the current that you measure is the same as the current that uh, you predicted. That is, that's my favorite way of doing things. Uh, so obviously we can't build, build real circuits because uh, we're all online here, but we'll use Tinkercad. So build the circuit on Tinkercad and you put in the right values for the, the two batteries and the right values for the resistors and let's see what you got. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I do want to talk about last night's homework. Um, and what I saw is that most of you submitted the homework uh, and it looked like most of you knew that what you were doing. Now, I'm not gonna confirm whether or not you get the right answer in the end, but your approach looked reasonable. So I'm hopeful that maybe your answers are right. But I did get a fair number of you who didn't submit uh, answers and I got a couple of you who wrote me a little note and said, hey, Mr. Hendricks, I gotta be honest here, I'm not understanding this. Uh, and so thank you for being honest. I definitely appreciate that. Uh, so for the sake of you, uh, those of you who, who would need a little extra help, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just kind of review how uh, Kirchhoff's rules work and where you get the equations from and how you use matrices to solve the equations. So if you are one of the people who says, I don't need to hear that, I got that, then go ahead and start working. Now, I don't want you to leave the Zoom room. I want you to leave the Zoom room on. And I want you to be listening while you're working on the other thing. So that if for some reason I, I choose to call you, I want you to be able to respond. But if you wanna just go ahead and open up Tinkercad right now and get working on, uh, on problem number six. In fact, tell you what here, let me, let me call up, um, okay, hang on a sec, okay. Uh, let, me, let me call this up. Okay, so, so let's go into Canvas and let's just remind ourselves what problem number six looks like. Uh, boy, I'm running a little slow here today. I know I say that a lot, it seems to run slow a lot. Okay, so let's go into electronics. Go into the modules. Hello. Okay. All right. So let's go into last night's homework. Um, so you'll see the homework for tonight, 3-4C, build a circuit for problem six and measure the currents. Yeah. So there's that. Uh, so, but let's, uh, let's just remind ourselves what problem number, what uh, problem number six looks like. Okay, almost there. Okay, so this is problem number six right there. So you'll notice we got a nine volt battery, a 1.5 volt battery, and then a couple resistors of various types. So when you go into uh, Tinkercad and you come down here for the batteries, you'll see, yep, there's a nine volt battery. There's a 1.5 volt battery. Uh, so it's almost as if I uh, kind of chose this on purpose there when I made my circuit there. So we got a 9-volt battery, we got a 1.5-volt battery, you got four resistors, hook them up. And then the currents, hopefully you guys remember, if you want to get the current, come down to the very bottom there, pull this guy out. And so there's a multimeter. Now the default setting for multimeters is voltage, so don't forget to change it from voltage to amperage. Uh, and then make yourself a current, or make yourself the, uh, the circuit. Now, I really strongly prefer that when you make your circuits, you use the, the breadboard, okay? So please put the resistors on the breadboard. Now, don't put them on like this, obviously. That's not gonna work. You're gonna have to rotate them, all right? And then you can go ahead and put, put, the, put the resistors on the breadboard like that. Now, if you wanna put them on like this, that's okay. 
but just don't put just don't put them on like this. That would be a problem. But if you want to put them on like this, that's fine. So please put the put the resistors on the breadboard. Now the batteries, it's kind of hard to put the battery on the breadboard. It can be done. I mean, right now that battery is now on the breadboard. But if you want to have the battery off and then just just have wires that come off here and go into the breadboard, you know, like that. Okay, I'd, I'd be okay with that. So if you want to go ahead and get started right now, and you don't want to sit and listen while I talk about Kirchhoff's rules and matrices, here you are, go ahead and get started. But stay on Zoom, keep your headphones turned on, stay listening so that if I call your name, you can, you can come out. All right, so let's talk about Kirchhoff's rules and how Kirchhoff's rules work. And uh, so in this case, on problem number six, you'll see that I, I was just in such a nice mood when I made up this problem. I actually put the equations on there for you, um, but I didn't put them on in standard form. So we need to convert them to standard form. So I don't wanna do problem number six for you. And we've already done problem number five. So how about I make up a brand new problem just from scratch here? And let's solve this brand new problem. Um, okay, so Henry, I want you to help me make up this brand new problem. So I am going to make up a circuit and, and this circuit is gonna look different from the other circuits. I'm gonna put a battery right here. Henry, give me a number for how many volts you want this battery to be. Uh, how about uh, 15, since it's the 15th. Okay, sounds good to me. All right, and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a circuit that comes over here like this. Okay, and Henry, while you're here, give me a number for how many ohms you'd like that resistor to be. Uh, 200. 200. All right. Now, while we're at it, I want to have another branch that comes over here. And I'm going to put a resistor in here. And I'm going to put a battery right here. And I'm going to hook up the battery, oh, let's say this way. All right. So uh, let's see. How about Lily? Uh, can you please give me a number for what you would like this other battery over here? How, how many uh, volts would you like that battery to be? Um, five. Okay, five volts. And this resistor right over here, how many ohms would you like that resistor to be? I'm sorry, uh, you cut yeah. out. Give me a number for how many re how many ohms you want this resistor over on the left side to be. 100. 100. Okay. And tell you what, just for grins here, I want to add in another resistor right here. So let me see. Can I just erase that? Yeah. So I was afraid of afraid if I erase that, it would happen. Okay. All right, and so let's see, how about, um, let's go with Owen. Uh, give me a number of how many ohms you'd like this resistor to be. I'm sorry, I've been working on Tinkercad. Uh, okay, so this, this resistor in the middle right here, how many ohms would you like it to be? Just choose any number. Any number. Uh, 100. Okay, 100 ohms. Okay, thanks. You can go back to working on Tinkercad now. I won't bother you anymore. Okay, so we want to know how much current is going to be flowing through each one of those resistors. What I'm going to do is first off, I need to find the junctions and figure out where the currents are going to be flowing. And so I'm gonna start at a junction and I'm gonna go until I get to another junction. So I'm gonna start at a, this junction right here. And I'm gonna say, what, the current that starts there and goes around this branch and keeps on going until it gets to another junction 
anywhere in that red uh, line there that I just drew, all of that current is going to be the same. So that means that the current that's going through this battery and the current that's going through this resistor will be the same because they are in the same branch. So I'm going to give that a name. Uh, so I'm going to call this resistor here R1 and I'm going to call this current I1. Okay, now let me switch to a different color pen. And so at this junction, I'm going to say, okay, I've got the current that's going to be going this way. And so I started a junction, I ended a junction. So I'm going to call this current I2. And so I'm thinking in order to be consistent, I'm going to call this resistor R2. And then the last thing, let me do in yet a different color here. How about that one? Okay, so now I need to, hey guys, those of you that are working on Tinkercad, can you uh, pause for just a second? Because what I'm about to do is really important and I don't remember talking about this before. So everybody who's working on Tinkercad, stop for just a minute and come back and look at the screen right now. I need to draw a current through this center branch right here. It is not obvious from just looking at it what direction that current is going to flow. Because uh, these batteries, you see how the battery up here has the plus side going that way, the battery over here has the plus side going that way. They're kind of sort of fighting each other, which by the way is not a good idea to design circuits like that because sometimes you, uh, you can destroy your batteries that way. But that's what we got, so let's figure it. So is the current going to flow downward through this guy or is the current going to flow upward through this guy? It's not obvious which way it's going to go. Now, if you wanted to sit down and do some math, you could figure it out. But right now, let's just say we don't know. And so what do we do if we don't know what direction the current's going to flow? So this is really important. And I hope everybody has stopped working on Tinkercad and is listening to what I'm about to say. It doesn't matter what direction we pick. I'm just going to arbitrarily pick a direction. I'm going to arbitrarily say that the current is flowing downward through here. Now, there's a very good chance that I'm wrong. And I, that doesn't bother me. Because what's going to happen is when we do the math and we put the numbers into the matrix and we get our answer, if it turns out that the current really is flowing the other direction, all that's going to happen is when I, when I calculate I3, which by the way is what this is, I3, I'll get a negative number. Fine, no harm done. Okay, so if I get a negative number, then I know I picked the wrong direction and that's okay. All right, everybody understand that? Okay, those of you that uh, were working on Tinkercad, if you wanna go back and keep working on Tinkercad, you have, my, you have my blessing. All right, now the rest of you, those of you that are still a little bit iffy on how this whole process works, I trust you guys are going to keep watching. All right, so here's the deal with uh, with Kirchhoff's rules. I'm going to pick some place on the on the uh, circuit as my starting point, and it doesn't matter where I pick it to be. So, just to be, uh, you know, I'm just going to pick one. So I'm I'm going to say this is my starting point. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the circuit, and it doesn't matter what direction I go. Um, but I, I'm going to follow the arrows just to make it a little bit easier. Um, all right, so I'm going to follow around the circuit and I'm going to keep track of all the voltage gains and the voltage losses as I follow the, around the circuit. Okay, so I'm going to follow through here. So, whoa, I just crossed over a resistor. Okay, now if I'm going with the current, that means I'm going to lose voltage. So the voltage I'm going to lose is whatever the value of that resistor is times whatever the value of the current is. So that means I'm going to lose 100 times whatever I2 is. Okay, let me fix that a little bit better. That doesn't look like a very good I2. Okay, now I'm over here now. Okay, so now I'm going to cross over a battery and I'm going from the negative side to the positive side and I'm going to gain 5 volts. Now I'm at a junction. I need to decide, do I want to go straight or do I want to turn right? 
and it turns out it doesn't matter. So yeah, I'm just gonna pick, I'm gonna go right. Okay, so I'm gonna cross over another uh, resistor and I'm going in the same direction that I guessed the current would be. So that means I'm going to lose voltage. And so R times I, you guys, you know, if I, if I equals V over R, that means V equals R times I. So the voltage that I'm gonna lose is gonna equal R, which in this case is 100 times I, which is I3. And notice I get back to my starting place here. So that means that it equals zero. So let me move that five over and make a little room here. So that put the five over here. So that equals zero. So there, and by the way, this is I3, I forgot the three there. Okay, so that's one equation, but it's got two unknowns. In. Oh, and by the way, uh, V, I, I, this V here, that, that V was five. I should, I should have written the number, not, not just the letter V, I should have written five. Okay, so that's one equation, but it's got two unknowns. So I need to get another equation. All right. Um, and so what I could do is I could go around this, the loop uh, that I, I could start here. And when I come here, I could just go straight instead of turning right. But just because I'm feeling a little bit contrary today, I don't think I'm going to do it that way. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start somewhere else just to prove that it can be done. So I'm going to start over here. And also, just because I'm really feeling contrary today, instead of going with the current, I'm going to go against the current. Because remember, see the arrowhead here, I assumed that the current was flowing like this. But just because I can, I'm going to go, when I go around the current, I'm going to, I'm going to swim upstream. Okay, so what that means is, when I cross over this resistor, I am going against the current. Because remember, we, we, we thought that the current was going like this. I, so when I cross this, the, uh, the resistor here, I'm, I'm swimming against the current. So instead of losing voltage, I'm going to gain voltage, I'm, at least if my assumption for the current directions is correct. So I'm going to gain voltage. And then the voltage is whatever R is times whatever I is. So R in this case is 200. So 200, and this current now is I1. So now I'm at this uh, point here. So I could go straight or I could uh, turn right. I'm gonna turn right, okay? Now, again, those of you guys who are working on uh, Tinkercad, I'd like you to stop for a minute. Cause again, I want you to, I want you to, to pay close attention to what I'm doing because it's a little different than what I did before. So for the, I'm gonna repeat myself for the sake of those of you who are working on Tinkercad. I started off right here. And because I was feeling contrary, instead of going around the circuit the same direction as the current is, I decided I wanted to swim upstream. I wanna go against the current. So that means I needed to, to add voltage I, if I'm swimming against the current, then rather than losing voltage, I'm going to gain voltage. So I gained 200 I. And now when I, I'm at this uh, junction right here, so now I'm going to come here. But this time you'll notice I'm going the same direction as what I guessed the current was. Now my guess might have been wrong, but once I pick a direction, I have to be consistent. So I am going in the same direction as what I guessed the current would be. So that means I'm going to lose voltage. And by the way, this is an I3 there. I forgot to write the three. So I'm going to lose voltage. And so the voltage I'm going to lose is 100. Times, oh, that's an, that wasn't an I3. That was an I1. Oh, okay. That's an I, this guy here is an I1. And then this guy here is an I3. And now those of you who are uh, doing Tinkercad, I trust you're watching. Okay. So I, I started off here, I gained some voltage here, I lost some voltage here. I'm gonna cross over a battery. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm crossing over a battery, but you'll notice I'm going the wrong direction. I'm going from the plus side to the minus side. So that means that I am going to lose voltage. So I gotta put a minus sign here and I'm gonna lose 15 volts. 
And so that now equals zero. Okay, so it's a little bit messy. I wish I had a bigger whiteboard, but I don't. Okay, so this now is my second equation. So those of you that were working on Tinkercad, you can go back to Tinkercad now. All right, so I've got two equations, but I've got three unknowns. So if I got three unknowns, I need three equations. Now, some of you might think, well, you can get your third equation by, by going around the loop, because we never went around this way. So you might think that you can get your third equation that way. But for reasons that I don't want to go into right now, but they are very important reasons, will remind me, I want, I want to make sure I talk about them later. Okay. Um, if you do that, when you put it in your calculator, you're going to get an error message saying that, uh, you know, something like uh, singular matrix or you're going to get an error message. So the third equation has to come from using Kirchhoff's current rule. And what that says, it says pick a junction and whatever current you see coming into the junction has to equal whatever current you see going out of the junction. All right. So hopefully you guys remember that when we picked our currents, this is the way that we picked them. Okay. This is what we thought the currents were going like. And we were just guessing, but we have to be consistent. So the total current coming in looks to me, whoops, I hate it when I do that. I use, I forget that uh, my pen is in eraser mode, not write mode. Okay, so the total current coming into the junction is I3 and I1. Okay, so I3 plus I1, those are the currents that are coming into the junction. And looking at my picture, the current that's coming out of the junction is I2. All right, so there we go. Those are the three equations that we want to solve. Okay, so let me make room here. So I'm gonna to have to get rid of our original circuit in order to make room. You know, I wish I could keep it, but there's just not room. What you gonna do? Okay, so I am now going to use matrices to solve these equations. But if I want to use matrices, the equations have to be in the form of, you know, like 2x plus 3y plus 7z equals 0. I mean, it has to be whatever is my first variable with its coefficient, whatever is my second variable with its coefficient, whatever is my third variable with its coefficient, and everything that does not have a variable attached to it has to be over on the right side. So that means I got to take this 5 and move it over the right side. I got to take this 15 and move it over the right side. Okay, I've, you can't put your things into the matrix unless you have it in standard notation. All right, so let's take let's take the uh, first equation, and so we got to take this five and move it over there. So it means I have to subtract a five from each side. And you'll also notice on that first equation, there are no I1s. But the matrix is going to require us to put something in there for it. So when I take this first equation and I write it here, I'm going to say 0 I1s minus 100 I2s minus 100 I3s equals 0. So my first equation is now in standard form. Okay, for my second equation, uh, this minus 15, I got to get it over on the other side. Now, if it's a minus 15, that means what I need to do is I need to do plus 15 to each side in order to get rid of it. So I'm going to have 200 I1s. And notice there are no I2s in here, but the matrix is going to force me to enter something. So I'm going to say plus 0 I2s. And then for my I3s, I got a negative 100 I3. So negative 100 I3. Okay. And then, oh, wait a minute. I made a mistake. You guys, when I make mistakes, you guys need to, to say something. This zero here, that's not a zero. I forgot 
that I, I subtracted five from each side. Okay, so this is a minus five over on the right side there. When I make mistakes like that, hey guys, please speak up. If you catch my mistakes before I do, then I will wear the wig, but you have to catch it before I do. Okay, so, so this then has to equal a positive 15, right? Because I had a negative 15 here, so I had to add 15 to both sides. Now, how do I get this guy in uh, standard uh, form? Well, let's subtract an I2 from each side. And then you have to make sure that it has to be in the form of I1 and then I2 and then I3. The order is important. Okay, so that means I'm gonna have one I1 minus one I2 plus one I3 equals zero. All right, we are now ready to break out the calculator. Um, so I'm going to do it on Desmos because uh, Desmos is a lot easier to work with. Let me clear some space here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define my A matrix to be just the coefficients. So that's going to be a matrix that's going to be 0, negative 100, negative another 100, and then I'm going to have a positive 200, 0, negative 100. And then I'm going to have a positive 1, negative 1, positive 1. That's my A matrix. And I got those from the coefficients over here. You guys see where those came from? All right. Now, my B matrix is all of the numbers that are over, whoops, all of the numbers that are over here on the right side. That's my B matrix. So my B matrix is going to be negative 5, positive 15, 0. Okay. If you have questions, type them into the chat box. Not seeing any, not hearing any. Okay. All right. So the magic phrase, which isn't really magic, we talked about where it came from last time, but if you didn't understand that, then just treat it as magic. And I'm okay with that. So the magic phrase here is A matrix inverse times B matrix. Now, I didn't say this last time. Those of you that are working on Tinkercad, come back for a sec. This is something that I did not say last time. Some of you might say, well, hey, three times four is the same thing as four times three, right? So A inverse times B should be the same as B times, that's a times, A inverse, right? You might think that that's the way that it works. It is not, for reasons that I don't want to go into right now, because this is not a math class. This is a, an electronics class. Although, to be honest, right now it's looking an awful lot like a math class, isn't it? Okay, you, you must not type it in as B times A inverse. You have to type it in as A inverse times B. Okay, those of you that are working on Tinkercad, you can go back to Tinkercad now. All right, so those of you that are still with me, Let's, uh, let's type this in. Now, before I get rid of this, let me write down the numbers here. So 0, negative 100, negative 100, 200, 0, negative 100, positive 1, negative 1, negative 1. So that's my A matrix. And my B matrix is negative 5, positive 15, 0. OK. All right, so now. Let's go into Desmos. So there I type in, I type in D and it automatically goes to Desmos. You can see that shows you how often I use Desmos. It's just the default on my browser now. Okay, so let's come down to the matrix calculator. And I want a new matrix. And when it creates a new matrix for me, it defaults to a two, 
two by two, but that's not going to work. I need it to be a three by three, so that's easy to fix. And so now I put in my numbers, zero tab, negative 100, tab, negative 100, tab again. So positive 200, tab, zero tab, negative 100, tab. So positive one, tab, negative one, tab, one. And let's make sure that I typed it in right. Okay, looks good. So now I hit enter. So my A matrix has now been defined. So now I do my B matrix. Oops, sorry, I didn't, let me try that. I haven't defined my B matrix yet. Got to define it first. So hit new matrix. And we want it to be a three by one. So let's make it be three by one. Okay, and our first entry here is negative five tab, 15 tab zero, and then hit enter. Okay, we've now defined our matrices. All right, so I take the A matrix, tell it I want the inverse of that, I wanna multiply it by my B matrix, and voila, there are the answers. Those of you that are working on Tinkercad, come back for a sec. I wanna show you something cool. Okay, so we've just typed in the numbers into the matrix. Here is our answer. Look, one of the numbers is a negative number. The number for I3 is a negative number. What does that mean? Well, it means that when we chose our directions, we guessed wrong on I3. It looks like I1 and I2, we got those right. Those guys are going the direction that we thought. But I3 is going the opposite direction of what we thought it was going. Okay, So the first number that you see is always the first variable in the order that you put them in. So that's I1. So it looks to me like I1 is 70 milliamps, you know, because it's 0 0.07, right? So I2 looks to me like is 60 milliamps. And looks like I3 is a negative 10 milliamps. And all that means is that it's 10 milliamps, but it's flowing in the opposite direction from what we thought it was flowing. Okay, so those of you who were a little bit iffy on this before, does this make more sense? Um, so I'd like you to type into the chat box Type it in privately because uh, you might be embarrassed and that, so I don't want you to embarrass yourselves. So privately in a private message to me in the tap, to in, the in the chat box. Okay, so I'm seeing some of you are saying that it helps a lot. Some of you are saying that it helps a little. Um, those of you that are saying that it helps a little, uh, can you think of a question that you can ask that would make it make more sense to you? Okay, I'm seeing several of you are saying that it helped a lot. Okay, that's that's good. If you're one of those people that only, that still is a feeling a little iffy, if you can think of a question to ask me. Okay, so somebody just told me that uh, you just need more practice. Okay, well, I have exactly the right thing for you to practice on. Okay, so let's go back into here. Okay, let's go into this guy right here. Um, problem number six. I set it up, I set up the equations for you. So let's take advantage of that. So I want you guys to, to take these equations, right, hang on just a sec while I get the right pen. Take these three equations, so the first thing you need to do is you need to put them in standard form. You need to have something I1 plus something I2 plus something I3 equals something that doesn't have any I's attached to it. So I need this one and another one and another one. So I need three, I need this guy put in standard form, this guy put in standard form, this guy put in standard form. Once you've got them in standard form, then what I want you to do is write up the matrix. Um, so I want you to say, 
your A matrix is something, something, something. Okay, that's going to be your A matrix. And then your B matrix is going to be something, something, something. So your A matrix is going to be a three by three. Your B matrix is going to be a three by one. Okay, and then just do the magic phrase A inverse times B. And whatever pops out of that is your answer. So write down the answer. And then rather than saying, Mr. Hendricks, is this the right answer? What I want you to do next is I want you to go into Desmos. Uh, sorry, not Desmos, go into Tinkercad. Okay. Um, yeah, so go into Tinkercad and create the circuit and measure the circuit, measure the current. And so if now you got three currents that you need to measure. So that means you're going to need to have three of these multimeters and make sure they're set for amperage. Make sure the default setting is voltage. So make sure they're set for amperage. And so make your currents, measure them, and see if you get the right answer. All right. So I am going to sit here quietly while you guys do that. Um, when you get the right answer, I want you to upload it to Canvas. Um, so if you look on Canvas, uh, let's okay. if you go back to the modules pace on Canvas, and do to do to do, do kind of slow here. Okay. So if we go down to the modules, you'll see there's a new one on here that says three uh, 4 C. Why is my, oh, my canvas is still loading. Good grief. Okay, here. So if you go to 3-4C, then you'll see that uh, there's a space here. Let me preview so it looks more like, like what you guys see. Okay, so here's a reminder of what the circuit looks like. Here's a place where you can type in what you got for I1, I2, I3. And then here is a place where you can submit the actual circuit. Now, in this case, all I need is a, uh, a screenshot of it. Um, so Tinkercad has, has a capability where if you click the share button, then it will let you download a snapshot of your design. So if you just click on the choose a file button right there and upload this, the uh, snapshot, then bingo, you're done. So if everybody gets working on this, I think that you can probably finish this up before 340. I am going to stick around online here so that if you have any questions, I can help you out. Do you have any questions right now before you uh, jump into it? Yes. Okay, what can I do for you? So um, just I kind of forgot, what did you do with the variables in the A matrix? Like, why did you change them? Because when I tried... Wait, can I see the A matrix again? I want to know like how you put the variables in there, like the I one, I two. Okay. Um, well, I uh, let's see if it's still on the whiteboard. It's okay. Good. Yeah, it's still on the whiteboard. Good. Okay. So when you say how do you put in the variables, you mean how do I get it in standard form, or do I, how how do I take it from standard form into the matrix? How do you take it from standard form into the matrix? Okay. So whatever is the variable of the uh, first, uh, or I'm sorry, whatever is the coefficient of the first variable, that goes right here. Whatever is the coefficient of the second variable goes right here. Whatever is the coefficient of the third variable goes right here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I was just confused because like how you uh, added up all the like one I one, one I two, and one I three. I just tried entering I one, I two, and I three in my matrix last night, and that's, yeah, that's why I didn't get it. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna work. It's the coefficient that you want to put there. That makes much more sense. All right, thank you. And and if there's a minus sign, okay, make make sure you put in the minus sign too. That's really important. Yeah. Okay. Also, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to finish all this at the 340 because I gotta go to like what was it like a BMB or something? Okay, well if you I gotta got go, a schedule. If you gotta go, you gotta go. It's not it's not officially due at 340. So yeah, exactly. Uh, it's not due till the next time we meet. 
but I, I would like to, you know, if possible, please stick around so that it, that way, if you have any questions, then I can help you. Um, Cause it's very easy to make mistakes when you, when you create your circuit. When the first time I did this, I created the circuit and then the current did not match what I predicted. And I was sitting here thinking, what's wrong? And I could not see anything wrong with my circuit. And then when I looked closer, I found out that I hooked up the battery. I hooked it up the wrong way. I hooked it up, uh, you know, from my, I, I hooked up the wire to the red terminal that should have been connected up to the black terminal. Oh, uh, yeah. And so there's, there's a lot of little silly little mistakes that you can make. If you do it right, I promise it will work. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pause the recording because there's obviously no reason to record me if I'm just sitting here doing nothing. Okay, so uh, if you're having troubles, tell you what, turn on screen share so I can see what you got. Yeah, I'm going to rewire it really quick. Yeah, me too. I'm just redoing it from the ground up. Okay, mm -hmm. once once you have it, let me know, and then I'll I'll have you turn on sh screen share. So then I once I see your uh, your circuit, then that'll like hopefully help you. Okay, I'm seeing something from you, Tristan. Let me look on here. Okay, the numbers look pretty good. Let me just check your circuit out. Okay. All right. It's kind of hard to read the numbers upside down, but okay, that works. Uh, okay, all right, good. Tristan, you're done. You can leave. Okay, let's see who else has submitted. No, nobody else has submitted yet. The rest of you, as soon as you okay. have something to submit, so, let me know. Okay, so uh, I, I did something. I did something. I got it in the uh, the resistor for uh oh wait that's not the right never mind never mind okay okay on my uh multi okay. but uh they're all not correct okay um can you share your screen with me so i can see what you got uh yeah i've given you permission so you should be able to click on share screen it still says it's disabled for me. Um, still disabled, huh? Okay, try now. You should be able to do it now. Okay, it works now. Okay, can you see it? Uh, okay, yeah, I can see it. And those are definitely not the right numbers. Uh, yeah. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. Those are definitely off by a few milliamps. Yeah. Uh, boy, let me put on my glass. It's hard to see. It's so small. Here, I can zoom in. Okay, good. Oh, that helps a lot. Yeah. Okay, you're sure the values of the resistors are correct, right? Uh, that one's 220. That one's in ohms. Downs 220 in ohms as well. Thousand and a thousand. Okay. Uh, hmm. Oh, I can hear, I can show you where my negatives hooked in. Yeah. Hooked yeah. up right there. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, that's interesting. I see the problem. What yeah, is my problem? The problem is your one and a half volt battery. Oh. Um, you've got it hooked up so that the plus side of the battery and the minus side of the battery are both mm -hmm. hooked up in the same row. Oh, okay. So you just shorted out your battery. Yeah, that's that's your problem. You, you understand that? Yeah, yeah. I okay. understand. I right, go back and fix that. Hopefully, hopefully it'll work better for you. And, oh, I, I know it'll work once you get it right. I, I guarantee it'll work. Here, let me start it now. 
Okay, your numbers are still not right. Yeah. I mean, it's better than it was, but it's still not right. Uh, the multimeter that reads uh, 8.58, can you uh, move that down a little bit? It... Oh, here, I have to stop the simulation. Yeah. Here to the side or just down? Because I don't, if I move it over in one of these holes, it tries to connect in them. Yeah, uh, move it way over to the right side. Okay, good. Can you click on the resistor values again? I, I want to make sure. So, so hang on a sec while I call up my circuit here. Um, give me, give me just a second. Okay. Here, so do you want me to start from the two twenty in the yeah, top yeah, click, left? So click on that. Yeah, click on that one. So that one's that one's two twenty. Okay, good. Now click on. Okay, that one's good. Okay, that I don't care which Here. one. Click on one. Of them. All right, this hey, one. Wait a sec. That's 220, okay, good. Click on the next one. That's 1000, yep. And then you'll click on the last one. That's 1000, okay. All right. Is it my, because I have these two directly hooked up to each other and not through a wire? That should not matter. Yeah, that's what I would think. Okay, so I'll tell you what, uh, I'd like you to uh, share your circuit with me. Um, not just a snapshot, but share the actual. But like the link over here? Yeah, so click on share. Oh, here, I got to move your face really quick because it's over <laughs> it. You got to move my face. Okay, and, and not that one yet. Go down to invite people. Okay. Okay, click on invite people and then send me that link. And then All that right. way I'll be, I'll be able to actually uh, play with the, the real circuit. Okay, do you want me to email it to you? Uh, yeah, yeah, you okay. know it to me. You know my address, right? Yeah. I I'm getting the right answers now. I think when we, when we move something around, we got it. Okay. Uh, are you, click, click on uh, start simulation. Do right. you see the numbers on there now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. one of them's just swapped. Yeah. It's a, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I think what happened was one of this, one of the uh, things we thought was plugged into breadboard Actually, wasn't. Once once I moved it over a little bit, that that seems to have jarred it. So we're getting the right answers now, Isaiah. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Good. Now I, I still want you to submit this. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna do that right now. Okay. All right. Here, do you want me to swap the uh, the one multimeter over so it isn't negative, or do you not uh, care? I don't care about that. That's fine. Okay. All right. So congratulations, you got it. Thanks. How about the rest, of you guys? You doing okay? No. Nope. Uh, so I guess the way that I have it wired up, it's not getting any electricity through it at all, period. Okay. So tell you what I want you to do. Uh, you see the share button over on the right? Yeah. So do you just want me to share it through Canvas? Yeah. Canvas? But but share a live link. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can submit it via Canvas if you want, but don't don't submit the uh, the snapshot. Give me a live link. That way I can actually open up your circuit like I did with Isaiah and we can figure out what went wrong. Send me a live. All right, so just copy the link and paste it in the canvas, right? Do you want the I, you want the snapshot or the live link for the canvas submission? I, I need the live link, not the snapshot. And don't just copy what's up at the top of the URL. You have to click on the share button and then you yeah, have to yeah. cl click on the button that says invite people. That's what I did. That's what yeah, I did. Okay, good. Okay. So the problem is that your nine volt battery is not connected. It's not, wait, how is it not connected? Well, look at it. I, I just moved it over a little bit. Oh, okay, it was never, okay, I connected it to the, okay. It was never. Yeah, it, it looked, when, when I first opened it up, it looked like it was connected, but I wasn't a click completely sure. So what I did was I clicked on the battery and I dragged it over a little bit and I saw you. Okay, that looks better. Uh, well, now it's wrong with the amphimeter. What did I do wrong here? Um, well, let's start the simulation and see. It is. It, it already started. Uh, I'm gonna take off. Thanks for the help. All right. Hey, you're welcome. So long. Brandon, that's it. Oh, is it? Is it really? Is it yeah, just... your one resistor there. That's a. It's in kilo ohms, not ohms. Oh. Ah. Okay. Okay. All right.
right? Okay, if we change that to ohms, yes. That's the problem, Brandon. It was in okay. kilo ohms, not ohms. I, right. I hate it when it's stupid little stuff like that. Look at that, look at that, all right. Uh, that doesn't, wait. So that's milli ohms, right? Right there, it is. But your your uh, other resistors are also in kilo ohms. Okay, okay. So let's change all of them to regular ohms. Oh my God, it looks, it's beautiful. It's actually right. Yes. Oh man. <laughs> that was it. Your circuit was fine. You were just oh, set for kilo ohms. Thank God it's ohms. over. Okay, all right. Thank you. Ah. See, I told you, I told uh -huh. you that as soon as we discovered the problem, we would say to ourselves, well, of course, it can't possibly work <laughs> like that. Yes, so. Man, <laughs> well, crazy. well, good. Actually, I feel good about this, Brandon. I think we, I think we got a lot done here. All right. Okay. Uh, so, am I gonna be marked down for uh, doing the? Yeah, right. For not doing the right number of sig figs on my paper. Oh, yes. Don't worry about that. Okay. I, I'm. I don't want to get a, hung up on sig figs. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, congratulations, Brandon. You go. Uh, I feel. I, I feel Eventually. alive. Like, now. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. All it's right, satisfying you. once you finally get it, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, see you. Okay. So long. Great. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're done here, and I, I need to end the meeting. So uh, I'll see you guys later. And uh, congratulations on getting the, the right ones, those of you that got them right. Right. Bye. Bye.